Hello everyone, welcome to Liberable. Today we've got something incredibly special to show you. We've got the VW GTI TCR coming in at 669,000 Rand. This is essentially the last of the Golf 7s. This is the tribute. This is the end. Do you want to hear how it sounds? Well, as always, like, share, subscribe, comment on the video if you like it. And if you want to see the previous video we did, click the card up above, we'll link you to it. Okay, so let's do a quick launch control for you guys. So first things first, sport mode. You immediately hear the exhaust gets a bit louder there. Traction off so that we can get the actual launch control going. We're going to drive, manual, sport, gear down. This could get a little dramatic because, well, 213 kilowatts front wheel drive yes it's got a limited slip diff to help it get off the line and to help it out of corners but that's a lot of power for just two wheels anyway enough of me rambling on let's see how it goes Under here we've got VW's EA888 engine. It's the same unit that goes into the standard GTI, the Golf R, and a whole lot of Audi units actually. The only thing that's different is, well, we've got software that brings the quoted figures up to 213 kilowatts and 380 newton meters of torque, which helps the zero to 100 figures kick off at 5.6 seconds, which is considerably faster than the standard GTI. Another thing that's different under the bonnet is the fact that it's got uprated radiators, the same one that the Golf R has. More cooling, never a bad thing. Then on the front, we've also got this front splitter that's been added. I know in Cape Town, when you buy a GTI anyway, a normal GTI, you're going to put a lip on it, but this one comes with one. So saves you the cost of adding one at a later stage. We've also got black alloy wheels that come with this car. It's set to be the only GTI that's ever come out with black alloys from factory. And you can also get it in a 19 inch alloy as an optional extra. You can also choose the rubber that wraps the wheel. You can get the cup twos and this comes with the P zeros. Another TCR exclusive is the fact that it's got these side skirts or spats, whatever you want to call them. Very good, very stylish. And they also complete the front and the side and the back look of the car. There's kind of this like skirt wrap around just looks then the decals very mixed reactions from these some people don't like them i like them if you're going to pay the extra that you do for the tcr you want people to know that you've got a tcr then on the back as i was saying the completed skirt look we've got this rear diffuser that's come off of one of elon musk's spaceships it really is angular it really is aggressive it really looks the part we've got another lip not a big wang but a lip nonetheless and it just adds that extra little crisp finish. Boot space. It's exactly what you'd expect from a Golf because it's a Golf. So you've got extra storage hatches on the side here. You've got your space saver with the necessary tools, 12 volt charging port, a little bit of clippies over here, tethers for the baby seats. And then 
for loading a rake, a broom, long objects, you've got that little compartment that flips down there and doubles up as an armrest. The back is also very much like a golf. I know it sounds obvious, but it is very important to point out just how practical this car is. Yes, it's fun. Yes, it's exciting. Yes, it sounds good, looks sporty, but you don't lose anything in the back that you would on normal golf. You've still got the normal two storage compartments. A lot of people cheap out on this and then you end up with just one on the passenger side. The storage bins on the side are also large enough to put actual objects in. They're not just there for decoration. On the side, and I really, really, really like this, they haven't cheaped out here either. There is still Alcantara here, leather. You've got this kind of carbon-esque finish over here. They haven't just added that to the front and left the back really bare. They really have put what they've put in the front in the back. You've also got dual aircon controls here and the seats as well have the same finish as the front. So wh wherever you're sitting in the car, you're still gonna feel just as special. Let's see what's happening up front. <laughs> this is more my style. I've got the steering wheel and the pedals. Everything kind of feels driver focused in here. We've got this lovely piano black finish here and something that strikes me very, very quickly here and that I really like is the fact that, yeah, you've got your cup holders and you've got your little storage compartment down here. But when you're not using it, everything just sits flush and it creates this flat, clean look. And I really love that. Then on the top, quite a nice little break from the plasticky finishes that we sometimes see. You've got the squishy material. Then on the side here, we've got that carbon-esque finish, the Alcantara and the leather that we talked about in the back. You've got controls for all four win windows here. You've also got window locks for the back and the passenger side. Then the storage bins. This adds a little bit of an element of like premiumness to it. They've got this carpet finish and it just, again, detracts from the whole plasticiness. It, it, it really breaks that monotony. Also got a little driver compartment over here so he can put his keys or whatever in there so no one else can touch them and move them there's nothing worse than getting home you go for your remote for the gate and someone's like moved it to the side or the back and you're oh damn now there's people behind me irritating the world anyway enough blabbing we've also got this alcantara wrapped gate over here which it's, you just look at it you're like oh sport really really good looking stuff then we've also got a storage bin here standard golf got a quite a lot of room in there actually and a slot for an sd card and a cd changer over there and when you're not using your other sd cards i don't know who has more than one sd card i've got two cameras but i only have one sd card anyway then you've got bank card slots over there yeah very practical stuff also this carbon-esque finish with the chrome interlay there this thing just looks the part you get in here and you're just like okay well Yes, it looks like a normal Golf GTI, but there are some subtle extras that really finish it off and make it feel that much more exclusive. Namely, the little badge over here that says that, well, this is the second last one ever made. Seats, well, they're very, very, very comfortable. They have the bolstering on the side, but I felt racing seats or bucket seats rather that are quite constrictive and you can't really move. You get in there, you're like, okay, well, now I'm a squished penguin or whatever you feel. But this one, you, you kind of can move. You've got the wiggle room, but on corners, they really are supportive. They've also got this Alcantara wrapped and they got the cool red finish. And then just for an extra little bit of specialness, we've got the GTI badge printed there. On the seat belts, we've also got this red finish, which I really like. And I forgot to, I forgot to mention that they also have it at the back, which kind of just adds to that whole we're VW, we're not gonna skimp out just because it's the back of the car. We want our rear passengers to feel just as special as the front. We've got VW's standard infotainment display up here. We've also got this electronic cluster that kind of mirrors what you're seeing over there. You can chop and change and decide what you want, how you want it displayed, really is cool. Then for the sporty fellas, we've also got really good telemetry software in here that has a G meter. It's got uh, track software so you can measure your track, your, your lap times and a bunch of other stuff you can see your, your temperature your boost gauge it really is cool then we've also got the standard apple carplay android auto they both work really well 
and we've also got let me just start it up so i can show you guys these various drive modes so we've got eco comfort normal sport and individual individual is where i spent a lot of my time because while i like the comfort i like the dampness a bit softer to kind of soak up the bumps when you're just cruising around the city i'm in a tcr i want the exhaust note to be more pronounced so i put everything else in comfort the steering in comfort just engine sound was whoo crisp i think this thing has an exhaust that is slightly more pronounced than the standard gti as well i don't know exactly what they've done to it maybe a smaller baffle box or downpipe but really does sound the part it definitely has the sporty looks so let's take it somewhere to see if it's got the sporty feel where better than front should pass to put this thing through its paces and see just how sporty it is so speaking about the drive well on the way here you guys didn't see that bit but we teleported to Franchip Pass from Claremont I averaged about seven liters per hundred k's now that's good by any means or measure when you're talking about a two liter auto but when you're talking about a two liter auto performance car it's slightly more impressive right so speaking of performance enhancements it's not just the styling that they've improved on this car we've also got the features that make it drive better not just look better so the dampness have been made slightly stiffer the springs have been stiffened and shortened and the car sits five mils lower than the normal gti so what that translates into let's put it through a corner here is that's quite nice is a little bit less body roll this thing seems to pivot or rotate more than it leans which is very nice because it gives you that little bit of extra confidence it's not like the car feels like it's tipping the whole time you actually feel like it belongs on corners then speaking of cornering and turning the steering in this car is quite sharp and I know it's electrically assisted and it's supposed to feel completely numb it's you, you get a little bit of a sense of what's going on just enough that you can actually pitch it into a corner and know that you're going to come out the other head end and make corrections where corrections need to be made and something i noticed before i actually did the research on it and it came to my attention that it was indeed true was the steering feels a little bit faster so they've actually taken the same steering rack as is in the normal gti and they've made it slightly sharper so you can definitely feel that it turns it into not so much of a track weapon but it, it's definitely more of a point to shoot kind of car now Ooh. and then another thing we've got to talk about is like the obvious is this car has more power than a standard gti duh so how do we put that on the road well it's got the same electronic lsd as the normal gti but somehow it actually manages to pass it off and you, you would actually say that this diff belongs in this car at, at least on corners on straights is another story but let's just put it in again so at the end of a corner when you start to straighten the wheel and pin the accelerator down the way it pulls you out of that corner is yeah there's no fuss there there's no it's exciting but there's no drama no wheel spin well very minimal oh <laughs> guys am i having fun so i must add a little bit of caution to that tail the only time i would maybe advise that you give a little bit of patience with your right foot is when the traction control is completely off and you're pulling out of a corner i would yeah, i would be a little bit patient because it does bite a little bit and when 213 kilowatts bites it bites quite quickly let's pitch it in and on the exit accelerate oh, a nice long straight here so speaking of straights right this thing has more power do you feel it well in short yes where do you feel it 
especially in the top of the rev range. So what they've done is they've given this car software and what it feels like is the engine's got a new lease on life. It is the same EA888 as I mentioned earlier, but it just feels like it can breathe a lot easier. Where the normal GTI feels a bit lackluster from five, six thousand revs, this one seems to shine. Let's just give it a little bit of beans here. And you really want to let it hit the top of the rev range because then you get that frpa that all of us South Africans get sold on so easily. <laughs> and then speaking of limiter, another little notable point that I think is important to add is that no matter what, and I know it's not a proper term, but even if you put this in the most manual, the manualist of manual modes, you still can't bounce this thing off the rev limiter because of the parameters. It, it keeps it in check. It'll change for you if you bounce it off the top. And as annoying as this may be to some, I think it's quite important because you don't, the last thing you want is to buy this car, pop the engine because of human error, and then you're sitting with one of 300 cars, except you're the only one out of those 300 that can't drive because your car's on bricks or jack stands. <laughs> oh. And we know that an EA888 is not the cheapest engine to rebuild. Guys, this thing is intoxicating. Okay, so a little bit of background on TCR. It stands for Touring Car Racing. So that is the type of racing that has been developed not for just production teams. It, it, it's for customer races. So you can literally buy your own TCR team. And this is like the final nod to the 7 Series Golf lineup. So they've kind of given a little bit of tribute by splashing it with TCR parts and styling and it it manages to feel special <sighs> damn I'm gonna miss this thing when it goes back I really am I mean I've been saying since the beginning of my appearance on this channel that I am the hot hatch guy but for this to be the first one that we get on the channel it's not a bad little treat oh. what they've tried to do then is give one last salute to the Golf 7 lineup and at 669,000 Rand and with a couple of extra TCR components to try and make it feel that much more special, have they done it justice? Is there enough to make it feel special? That's the big question. Well, it's fast, it's unique, it's good looking, it's relatively comfortable. And when you put it up against the, the other hot hatches, the FK8 that's more wackier looking, the Focus RS that is arguably more engaging to drive, this comes out as, well, it's a golf, it's an all-rounder. It plays every game the right way. So I think that my money would go into this. I've got the Black Capitec card. It doesn't have 669,000 Rand on it, unfortunately. But if it did, I would definitely shortlist one of these because come winter in Cape Town, this one would be the, the all-rounder that could tackle the wet weather and still feel unfazed. At the end of the day, I think it is exclusive enough to make the driver feel special. And that's what it's all about, I guess. Anyway, that's my take on the new VW GTI TCR. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up. Let us know what you think in the comments. And obviously subscribe to the channel, all that good jazz. I'm going to be gracious enough to let Niaz drive home now. As unhappy as that makes me. Anyway, be free, be you, Liberable out.